most dangerous game show was filmed in front of a live studio audience. And kicking off the world's most dangerous game show, we're starting off with Thailand's most violent game, Muay Thai. Full rules up ahead. Holy shit, we've got a knockdown already. That's Sam in the blue corner from AKA Thailand. Steve just getting up off the mat, repping Phuket Fight Club. And I'm here, JP Mastanta, with my partner in crime, Luke Welling. How you doing, Luke? Good to see you, JP, as always. Another steamy one here at Rawai Boxing Stadium, and Sam is trying to murder this guy. And Sam here looking like a young Malcolm X, landing elbow after punch, after knee, after uppercut. Yeah, he's like a young Malcolm X or like a homeless Tiago Santos. I'm not sure Steve knew the fight was going to start when it did. He is getting his ass absolutely kicked here. I've seen Sam walking around a bunch of times. He does look like a straight murderer. Steve's really getting a throttling here in the first round. This is, holy shit. This is kind of tough. Sam's right hand is really dictating the fight right now. And we are just in the first round here, and all of the action is coming from one side. Sam is beating the absolute piss out of Steve here. Sam is really unloading on Steve here. Oh, no, more uppercuts, more punches, another elbow, another knee. Has Steve right up against the ropes. I've never seen Steve before, but if this is his strategy, I've got a few notes for him. This is, this is a dangerous way to start a Muay Thai fight. Steve's going to have to start fighting soon. This stadium is rocking right now with a lot of AK Thailand people. Sam is really giving them a lot to cheer about right now. So it does look like he's slowing down a little bit. Sneaky Steve weathering the storm here, and looks like he's turning the tide a little bit, backing Sam up, kicking somebody's ass. You can gas yourself out. Is is Steve going for the Homer Simpson method here? Yeah, Steve's growing on me. He's backing up Sam here. It looks like he's getting a little tired. Crazy turn of events. This is Steve's Rocky moment. Beautiful punch there from Sam. The clinch action in the middle, making it ugly. And that's the first round. Heck of a fight here. We're gonna check out this first knockdown. I believe this is the opening seconds of the fight. Uh, again, I'm not sure Steve knew we were going yet. That right hand of Sam's is really devastating. It's knocked down Steve twice there in the first round. Steve is very, very good at conserving energy. Weathering the storm like a young Captain Ahab. I'm not giving up on Steve Arino here. I think he started to move him back in that last round. Sam may have gassed himself. Oh, hey! <laughs> one punch, one punch knockout. Steve is down. Steve My, is down. My uh, streak of predictions that are all wrong continues. I'm literally wrong every time. You know, life has its ups and downs. Sometimes you're the club and sometimes you're the baby seal. This didn't go all that well for Steve-O here this evening, but good on you, buddy. Welcome to the most dangerous game show. The number one game show. From the creators of Full Metal Doja, Fight Circus, and Bare Knuckle Kingdom come a new, elevated series, game shows, comedy, and face punch. Oh, yeah! All into one epic series known as The Most Dangerous Game Show. We just started off with a Muay Thai fight. Cold opener. Cold opener. Right? Am I, am I right? We're filming in front of a live studio audience. And then BAM! The commentators come in, red and blue corner go at it, and that was some hot fire, my friends. I'm super happy that that happened in the O2 Arena of Phuket, Thailand, our studio. The most dangerous game show studio. Live and in full effect from the Pearl of the end of Phuket, Thailand. You should go there. Friends, let's move on to the next contest. Way back in December, after the 12 fights of Christmas, two of the best conjoined Siamese twins kickboxers on the planet, out of the trees, they were hanging. Oh, I picked a black fruit, and I tasted that fruit, and I said, I want more of that. I want more of those two. Our 12 fights of Christmas wound up being four fights and a couple eating contests, but we had Siamese twins. Two guys stuck together by only a t-shirt. Cotton in the way of cotton. How am I gonna get through? Can I fight my way out of this wet paper bag? Well, can you? Yes, we can. And then, let's find out who the best Siamese twins kickboxers are on the mother-loving planet right now. 
and welcome back to the most dangerous game show here at Rawai Boxing Stadium. We got something very special for you guys now. Luke, you want to give us the details? Well, what we have here is Siamese Twins Kickboxing, and it's actually a final of the 12 fights of Christmas we did that turned into about five fights, an eating contest, and a good amount of drinking. So I'm really looking forward to this one. We got Matt Semper in there, the world's leading authority on Siamese Twins Kickboxing, giving the instructions. We got the abominable snowman in the white and the blue. And in the red corner with the green shirt, we have the green monster. Thank you so much for that right there. Here we go, round one. Let's get started. Yok Ti Nung, a couple kicks there, starting off from the green monster. Abominable snowman delivers in kind. We should both do play-by-play. -play. There are so many limbs flying. It's There's very so. hard to keep up with. Our copy box <laughs> machine tends to set on fire during these fights. Everything's just coming fast and furious. But we don't know which direction. Oh, there's another one. A nice one there from the white team. I think attacking the legs is smart there from the abominable snowman. You got to find some way to slow down four other legs. The best way to chop a tree is from below. Why would... Ooh. Obviously. <laughs> I mean, that was weird. Um, yeah, there's uh, not a lot of feeling out here. Very few jabs, just full throttles. Oh, he's caught the kick. But there's still three feet on the ground when you've even caught the kick. It's just madness. Snowmen are pushing back the green monster, but they're even, they're retaliating there even with the catch kick. Yeah, I see the problem with catching a kick is he's still got three to stand on. I mean, that's more legs than I got. There's no way you're losing your balance on this. Oh, nice kick there from the green team. I think Abominable Snowman's got the weight advantage, but Green Monster maybe a little speed advantage here. <laughs> Matt Semper running in there like there's anything he can do when there's four guys just going at it. Let's take a look at our replay. Yeah, these are always pretty great. Okay, so several kick. Oh, up. Oh. Yeah, you can you can't keep up with these even in slow motion. Couple punches from both sides. There we go. That's where the heads collide. That's like the perfect blow. Unreal. Fighters just dragging their partner back into the action. Here we go. Round two. Let's get going. I am honestly so distracted about what life is like as a Siamese twin. Like, do you need two licenses? Like, how do you take shit? Uh, uh, sorry, let's get back to the action. Oh, green team coming out with Whoa, a bit of, of a strategy shit. here. Hammer away. Oh, no, back nice elbow. Kick there. Oh, double teep. Double teep. I think that's the first double teep we've seen so far in Siamese kickboxing. Matt Sepper looks genuinely terrified in there. He knows there's not much. If these guys get out of control, he's in trouble. Oh, we got another caught kick. <laughs> Matt Sepper, I think, still trying to figure out the rules himself. <laughs> a lot of chaos going on in there right now. I'm told this is the fastest growing sport in Southeast Asia. There's a lot of gambling here. Slowing down a little bit, but, you know, you're also, I think, learning on the fly. Ooh, another good kick off that middle. So, yeah, you know, when you're a Siamese twin, do you get tired quicker or do you have double the gas tank? I, honestly, I have so much to learn. And that's why we're here, the most dangerous game show. Some serious kicks there from the green monster. The snowmen seem to be losing their composure here. They can't really seem to find their footing, and they're just throttling their shirt. Snowmen kind of coming unglued here a little bit. The shirt's starting to strangle one of them, stepping on each other's toes. Significant blows on their, I'd say, smaller opponents. So it's still kind of anyone's game. Let's take a look at the action once again. Second round really started with a whole barn burner. And here we go. Double teep. Double teep. Yeah, the double teep's great. I think that's going to, you know, once, once these guys can sort of master the strategy, that's going to be a useful, useful tool. All right, cornerman trying to figure out what to do with 
guys who are trapped in an enormous shirt. And as per usual, they're just dousing them with ice water. It's like a water polo match in the corner of these events. But it is hot in here, so you need something to get you kick back up. Here we go, round three, Yokisan. Whoa! Oh, do we have a nut shot? Do we have a nut shot? Nope, doesn't look like it. I think he kicked him right back in the nuts. I think the ref didn't want to do anything about it, so he kicked the other guy in the balls. Good on you. Green Monster getting bullied right now. Right into the corner. Green Monster are using those kicks to enter and then hit those punches. Look at them. They're very coordinated at this point. They got that dance down. They are. Green Monster is not laughing anymore. They are biting down on the old gum shield, which I don't even think they're wearing. And haven't had it. Oh, they've got the snowman backed up in the corner now. This could be it. They can't figure out a way out of this. They're just receiving blow after blow. The big boys walking them back out of the corner right now. They can barely walk in a straight line at this point. I think if you catch kick one of their kicks right now, they might actually fall. We might actually see a fall down, a knockdown here. Oh, I think we got another one right in the cubes. Let's see if he tries this retaliatory dick shot. Just about 10 seconds to go here. This is incredible. I honestly, how on earth do you score this fight? This is amazing. Incredible. First ever final championship of Siamese Twin Kickboxing. I am thrilled. What a great night here at Roy Boxing Day. John not stepping in there to thank Matt Semper for, I don't know, he didn't do much, but somebody had to do this. Somebody had to pretend they were a referee for this ridiculous sport. Good stuff. Yeah, the body heat under the shirt of the abominable snowman, I'm guessing, is just out of control. What are the judges gonna say? The green monster takes the cake. Okay, the take reindeers. that back. They're not the green monster, they're the reindeer. The reindeers have won. Again, throw back to the 12 fights of Christmas where this came from, and we are bringing you the finals now because of the disastrous way that other event ended, but I digress. Hell of a fight. Even with two mouths, you can't get a word in edgewise when John Nuts got the microphone. The most dangerous game show, Siamese kickboxing, on to the next one. I am your rich master, we're in the sticks, we're in the jungle. Let's get up and let's get it up right there. This is Fight Circus. Yeah. This is so good. There are no losers in this dojo. You have been warned. You say grabbed a gun from behind and shot her in the neck. I'm Teddy Mulve, and this is Notorious Crimes. Laws are for the common man. Also, nothing is safe. Nothing. Museum burn. Given 10 years. Double pump shotgun. Right into the ceiling. This story is absolutely infuriating. You drove by, saw her, and took her. Hey, you talking to me? Seems like it's kind of like a Mark Burnett stylized game show, like we're like the, the amazing race or survivor. And yeah, we're that good. We're of that caliber. But what they don't have, which we do have, is two men 
who are so champion-tastic at flipping coins. They got history and they got beef and they got to settle the grudge. But what's going to happen on the most dangerous game show when heads means you only fight with your elbows and your fists and tails mean you only fight with your knees and your kicks? That's right. Upstairs, downstairs. Now let's go to John Henry in the danger zone. This rivalry has simmered for decades. The two best coin flippers in Thailand have been butting heads since they could crawl. Both born with the God-given aptitude for coin flipping, through the years, many an orphanage have been rocked by the coin flipping madness that has been winding for years as they grew up. Today, this rivalry is settled once and for all. Petzilla versus the other guy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Heads versus Tails. Welcome to the Danger Zone. We're doing a Heads versus Tails battle, also known as the Upstairs Downstairs battle. John Henry in charge of the uh, action here with garbage audio. So what I think he is explaining, we have the coin toss coming up right now. We've given Petzl the honors because he's funnier. I'm going to assume that's heads, but honestly, I can't tell. The currency here is kind of a joke, and uh, 10 bot in the States gets you absolutely nothing. Betzilla, you got heads. You have fists and elbows only. Other guy, you have knees and feet only. Don't don't let me see you use that big toenail as a weapon. John Henry explaining the rules, and do not use your enlarged toenail, I believe was his last instruction. The other guy's just getting rubbed down by... I don't, is, Boyfriend, his brother, um, it's unclear, but. And yes, we have the Bruce Lee old school MMA gloves for Petzilla. We, we whipped out that surprise. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Fight! First round, when Petzilla can only use punches and elbows while his opponent, the other guy, can only kick and knee. Yep, Petzilla with the black gloves, the other guy with no gloves, which is gonna be kind of a disadvantage for trying to defend against those punches. Petzilla working on that body. Trying to catch some kicks, using those opportunities whenever his opponent's leg is up. Yeah, these guys may not be known to the American audience, but they are absolute coin flipping legends over here. And this rivalry is real, as you can see. They're heading right into the action. A couple kicks there from the other guy. Who's back up against the ropes. I think one of the main benefits of this sport is super distracting to remember you can only punch and kick. Nice evasion from Petzilla there, but you don't see a lot of defense. It's like it take, I think it occupies a lot of your brain remembering you're not allowed to use a certain part of your body. Petzilla just eating some of those kicks and John Henry there to stop the action. Let's take a look at the replay here. Yeah, this fight's going just exactly as you thought it would. Petzilla just going upstairs and downstairs in terms of his punches. The puncher has the advantage, it seems, in the amount of blows you can get off. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, you can throw three, four, five punches at the time it takes a guy to throw a second kick. Mm -hmm. And he's able to at least evade much quicker, catching kicks, swiping them away. Here we go, round two. Puncher, are you ready? Kicker, are you ready? Fight! Yep, starting to use the knees. I didn't see many of those in the first round. Good coaching. Oh, Petzilla really wailing on him. But that belly is, you know, it's not small. John Henry, uh, the leading authority in upstairs, downstairs, fighting. He, uh, he, he educates himself extensively at the Weird Fight Institute. Yeah, Petzilla's breadbasket is certainly... Certainly's got a lot of cushion there. He's able to train with it by having elephants walk all over him. One of the best guts in the game. Betzilla doesn't actually have internal organs. It's just all scar tissue at this point. Good little scrap we got going here. Both sides kind of settling into a groove. Both taking a lot. Oh, we got a head kick. 
sneaky by the other guy. Didn't really land too much there, but Petzilla using this opportunity to, to really pepper in his shots. This is definitely uh, bloodier than the coin flipping that they're used to. Oh, nice elbow across the temple there from Petzilla. Who would know coin flipping would lead to this? And there we go. That's the end of round two. Let's take a look at the replay here. Knee City all day from the other guy, but Petzilla is able to retaliate with a bunch of body shots of his own. Those knees are probably scoring, but Petzilla's got such a massive gut. I doubt they're doing much damage to the man. Let's see what happens in round three. Puncher, are you ready? Kicker, are you ready? Fight! Tough fight to score, to be honest. That might be 1-1. One, one. Here we go, round three. The other guy starts off with a nice little left body kick. But Petzilla coming back, working on that body, blocking that kick. Petzilla very confident in there, backing him down. He already won the coin toss. Nice uh, he's Petzilla. already got one victory here today. Oof, really working on that belly of the other guy. The other guy eating a couple, couple straight punches. But he is getting his kicks in. Yeah, nice body kick there by the other guy. Oh, a little clinch work. I think he just realized that's where his advantage is. You have no gloves on, buddy. Just grab him. Beauty. Petzilla able to capitalize and use those belly shots on the other guy. John Henry, super professional, wearing sunglasses in there. Oh, back in Petzilla up for the first time. The waning moments here. We got a good fight. Oh! A couple clinch work right there. And that's the end of the third round. That's the fight. Oh. Ah, tough one to call, to be honest. Super curious to see how this one turns out. This round really looked like it went to Petzilla, but now let's go to John Henry for the referee's decision. After three 90-second rounds of heads and tails action, our judges have come up with a decision. Straight and fight out of downstairs. Other guy! Oh, the other guy takes it. Unbelievable. Fighting out of downstairs. Other guy wins this rivalry. That's what's epic about the most dangerous game show. Even when it's right in front of your eyes, you literally don't know what's happening. To the next one. I am your rich master. We're in the sticks. We're in the jungle. Let's get up and let's get it on Fight Fan. This is Fight Fan. This is so good. You have been warned. Issei grabbed a gun from behind and shot her in the neck. I'm Teddy Mulvey, and this is Notorious Crimes. That laws are for the common man. Also, nothing is safe. Nothing. Museum burn. Given 10 years. Double pump shotgun. Right into the ceiling. This story is absolutely infuriating. He drove by, saw her, and took her. Hey, you talking to me? most dangerous game show. We're basically Valentine's Day. We're all about lovers. We're all about blind dates. Blind date the television show? Remember that dating show? Remember that dating show? That's basically this. That's what we're doing right now. This is the most dangerous date you're ever going to be on, my friend, because you might get strangled to death. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the biggest, baddest show on the block. This is 
the most dangerous game show, Blind Date Edition, and we are back with our next contestant. Let's bring her out, female contestant. Lovely female contestant, who I'm told is a high blue belt, maybe purple. She looks super happy to be here. What do you want to get out of being here on the most excellent game show that's ever existed? True love. Good luck with that. True love. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, from our female contestants. Let's bring out suitor number one. This guy looks like maybe a bit of a European type creepo. Suitor number one, if you win female contestants' heart, what will you do with it? We will drive off on my bike into the sunset and have a real good time. You can't trust a man who smiles like that. Man, that sounds sexy. And now, let's bring out contestant number two. This guy's a legendary player hater in Phuket. We've all seen him, we've all dealt with his antics. There's so many choices this man made this morning that I fundamentally don't agree with. I hear he's into what they refer to over here as ice. What are you gonna do if you win the grand prize? I'm gonna take her out on a date to McDonald's on half price night. That sounds baller. I'm not sure that's actually a handlebar mustache. It looks like it may be more of an infection. And now, suitor number three. Oh, look at this nice guy. He's European too, but not the sort of dirtbag Eastern variety like the other guy. Suitor number three, I'll ask you the same question. If you win your challenger's heart, what are you gonna do with it? I'll treat it like a small, dark puppy dog. That's strange. That's strange. But I'll take it. I'll take nice it. Nice and gentle. And now, let's get over to our questions with female contestants. Number one, if we were out on a date at a nightclub and Dwayne Rock Johnson walks over and grabs me in an inappropriate place and refuses to let go, what would you do? Fantastic question from our female contestant. What would you do if he grabbed her in an appropriate way, like bowling ball to her, something like that? I would jump on his head, poke his eyes out, then choke him, and then we would join the sunset on the cliffs by the end of the sea in time. He's not lying. He's not lying at all. I, I, I like that. I like what he's doing. Suitor Absolute sack of shit. This is probably Phuket's biggest sack of shit. And she was grabbed by Dwayne the Rock Johnson in some sort of shocker like position. Man, I would beat the shit out of Dwayne Rock Johnson. He's a big ass bitch. Suitor number two. Suitor number three. What would you do? Dwayne the Rock Johnson comes in on the date, you're with her, and grabs her by the fanny. Well, I'd probably think he's probably had a long, hard day. There's two sides to every story and no physical altercation is, is resolved uh, through dialogue, so we'll just talk it out and it'll be all fine. Quite different. Quite different answers from our three suitors. If I was spending the night at your house and while lying in bed, we hear the unmistakable sound of Dwayne DeRock Johnson breaking into the house, what would you do? Ain't that the question we've all had, am I right? When you're growing up in those teenage years, you just, everybody, we can all relate to having that question. Suitor number one, what do you do? I would still go with my favorite. I love choking. If this guy hasn't murdered someone already in his life, he will at some point. Just a sketchy looking dude. Everything choking, even when it comes to Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, B and E, downstairs, what do you do? I would pimp slap the shit out of him with my samurai sword and I would get him to pay my bills because I don't really have money to pay my bills right now. And again, so that would really kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, suitor number two, I would suggest like sell his plasma for some money, but his blood's basically flammable. And suitor number three, you hear what the rock is cooking. B and E, what do you do? Well, if the upstairs window's open, I'll probably jump out. There's not much in my house of value, to be honest, so I'd probably jump out, and then she can come and follow me. I can try and catch her, but there's no guarantees. At least he was honest. She might land on her big fat ass, something like that. You know what I mean? It happens. It always happens. 
Ask your final question, Nato. If we were on a plane together, and all of a sudden the oxygen mask dropped down, and the plane starts diving, and we look outside the window, and on the wing, we see Dwayne The Rock Johnson holding the only parachute, what would you do? I honestly think that's probably the best question I've ever heard. Um, so again, suitor number one, what do you think you're gonna do? It's quite simple, really. I would put on the mask and enjoy the ride. I'm pretty sure I've seen this guy on Thailand's Most Wanted. Enjoy the ride down. Give me a ticket to hell. I'll go in a handbasket. Suitor number two, same question goes for you. What do you got up your sleeve? I'll probably pimp slap him with my samurai sword and crash the plane in Singapore in some place where they had half price mojitos on the beach. And then I would hold on to my girl with my strong pimp hand. Woo! Can you tell that I'm out of breath? Was that Ric Flair? Wow, that was the worst Ric Flair woo I've ever heard. That, that was crazy bad. Uh, suitor number three, what do you got up your sleeve? Well, I'd probably just assume the crash, crash position, uh, kiss my own ass, and then hope for the best, because air travel is the safest form of travel we know, so it'll be fine. Wow, again, I applaud you on your uh, confidence in everything. You're, you're a real wildcat. And I hope that uh, you may win the love of our female contestant. Now let's go over and see whose W comes true here at the Most Dangerous Game Show Blind Date Edition. You heard from Suitor 1, Suitor 2, and Suitor 3. Can we have your deliberation? I pick Suitor number 3. Suitor number 3 with the win here at the dating game, the special one here on the most dangerous game show. I can't even argue with that decision. I guess if you're a father-in-law and someone's gotta be with your beautiful daughter, you'd want this kind of pussy. Blind date edition has come to an end. Oh wait, no it hasn't. Our lovebirds still have to go on their fantastic date. Female contestant and suitor number three have won the date of a lifetime down in Phuket, Thailand, the Pearl of the Andaman, where they will also fight in submission grappling in a Toyota Ford Runner. Wait, what? Whoa. Get out of town. John Henry, what are we doing here? Oh, we don't have any happy endings here. Here's a Toyota Ford Runner and some car jitsu. No eye gouging, no fish hooks. No bowling balls. Bowling you balls. understand the rules. All right, John Henry's going to call the action from the sunroof. Right, man. One, two, three, fight. This car looks very unclean, but I am all for this. Let's go. We got full on grappling in an SUV. And this creep's getting right at it. This is kind of sketchy looking. He seems a little too happy to be in this scenario. And a female contestant is ready for him there. Did we do a background check on this guy? She's looking for some arm drags there. And she goes for one, the driver's seat gets right in the way of her being able to take the back, pushes him right up against the back seat there. Looks like she's going for the seat belt. It's got a, is that, would that be mount? Whatever it is, it's hot. This is great. That's quite an expression. That's a man who realized what he just got himself into. This is a little sketchy. Oh, she's going for, she's going for the seatbelt. Unreal. Wrapping it around her, his neck. That's fully legal. I discussed this with the rules committee. Seatbelt's in play. She's got the seatbelt. She's trying to carry Dean. John Henry keeping a close eye on the action. She stays on top, tries to push his elbow down, tries to trap his elbow, but she has the seatbelt wrapped around his head to in her hands, she's trying to wrap it even further around his neck, really trying to get a, a choke going. But he's able to defend just enough. Well, she's, I guess she's in the straddle position? Whoa. This is really intense right now. This is amazing. I could watch this all day. This, this is almost not even appropriate. She's going after his neck, but he's just able to, to use his limbs, his arms, to, to tangle that seatbelt up. He, yeah, he looks stressed, he looks horrified, he looks like he's been overmatched. And she's still trying to choke him out with the seatbelt. Incredible. We're gonna have to come up with all kind of new names for these submission moves. He had the forearm in the neck. JD Power Associates, number one, three years running for jujitsu in a car. Not since John Donaher's leg lock game has jujitsu evolved this quickly. Female contestant puts her head under the chin. Really uncomfortable position. She's putting him in now. They're both getting on top of the seat now. She's, she's still on top. 
in what I would guess is a, a, sort of a modified mount position because of the back seat there. Oh, she goes for the coach, she, for the choke. She's going for the choke. For a rear naked choke there, but she doesn't have the back. He's kind of on the side there. Yeah, the, it's the, the early rounds with the all leather interior, you still got good grip, but it, it tends to get a little slick once there there's perspiration all over the back seat of this car. She puts his head right near the mold. His ass with the, seat belt. the safety rating on this Toyota must be insane. Our referee is allowing the seatbelt to really kind of choke him. She's going for the back now. It's a little tough to get there. She's he's gone his side, but she's 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 wedging herself behind him just enough to kind of get that arm around his neck. But he's he's defending. He's not having a good time at all. Oh, she's got one she's got one strong hook in there. This must be really, really a strategic battle here if you're a female contestant. Oh, he kind of slams her right, right up against the back seat or up against the paneling. Unless he's a foot fetishist, that's got to be uncomfortable. This is going to be one of the top three weirdest boners I've ever had. He's fighting dirty now. Bouncing her off the car. Oh, he looks fucking pissed. Uh-oh. Armbar. She's going for an armbar. Nice Kimura grip there for a second. Male contestant's in trouble. Gets that leg over. Now it's starting to look like prom night. Oh, he's stacking her. Oh, he's, he's out from danger. And now he's in the guard. Oh, seatbelt back into play. Male contestant has a seatbelt now. Jamming the buckle in her face. Ref, is that allowed? That's insane. He's got the buckle. He looks like he's trying to put it in her mouth. I don't know how that's... Uh-oh. Whoa, beautiful transition to the triangle. She saw that opening. And she's... Pulling his head, pulling his head down, and now she's gonna try to lock it around him. There, she's got the lock in. He's done. This is nuts. He's going. He looks he's, like he's going out. He looks like he's going out. Ref, get in there. Ref he's going out. out. Bye bye. bye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Deal is John Henry dives through the sunroof That's to commitment. save male contestant. That's commitment. Uh, can we bring her back? She's super hot and a talented fighter. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure this guy's dreamt of trying to overpower a woman in the back of a car, and I bet he didn't think it was gonna go like this. At 45 seconds left, we had a triangle submission by female contestant. Female contestant with her hand raised at the end of our first ever intergender car jitsu match. She's able to overpower her opponent really quickly with a triangle choke, even off her back inside of a Ford Escape. If we don't get arrested during the commercial break, we'll be right back. shot her in the neck. I'm Teddy Mulvey, and this is Notorious Crimes. That laws are for the common man. Also, nothing is safe. Nothing. Museum burn. Given 10 years. Double pump shotgun. Right into the ceiling. This story is absolutely infuriating. He drove by, saw her, and took her. In the world wrestling triathlon of power and marketing, that's right, two huge fucking individuals will get together and they'll be like, yo, two-handed mercy rule, Ric Flair traditional chop battle, and the leg drop off the top rope. That is the wrestling triathlon that these two fine specimens are on. Called it 
the most dangerous game show. Here in the Pro of the Animal, we don't mess around. The most dangerous game show comes and brings the world wrestling triathlon of marketing and power to your doorstep. There have been those that have doubted the existence of Luke Welling. They weren't sure if he was in fact a real human being, but as the cameras have confirmed, he is real and that is what he looks like. In his place is me, Richard Arthur, co-founder of Full Metal Dojo. I have no idea what's going on and I feel slightly uncomfortable. It's great to be here, JP. It's good to have you, Richard. Look at that. Luke Willing on the ground, all vegan Jeff Bezos right here. The first knee to touch dirt loses. The two competitors in this triathlon, Sam Cassidy and Steve Panda Banks. There is a back history between these two large gentlemen. They have faced off before at Fight Circus 1. What a great night that was. Rewatch that show, ladies and gentlemen. You will not regret it. But now they reignite their rivalry here at the triathlon. On my count. Fight. So what is happening here, JP? So if you're familiar with being a dirtbag on the playground when you were growing up, this is Mercy Rules test of strength. Basically, interlock your fingers with your opponent. The first person whose knee touches the ground loses. It's a kind of handy pandy tennis match. Oh, there it is. There it is. And they're off. Like two pythons embracing in combat. Oh, two hands, two hands have made contact. Oh my god, they're both wincing here. It's like a playground playoff between two large school bullies. These two are tough and they know each other's strengths and weaknesses. They know how tough the other person is. It's like a prison cafeteria dispute gone horribly wrong. Remember, this is until the knee hits the ground. Our referee, John Henry, is calling the action. Let's take a minute to appreciate their ham and sausage fingers. It's like a shitty low budget King Kong versus Godzilla movie. Sam Cassidy really using his height advantage to kind of bully Steve Panda Banks. When you bend the knee in this sport, it's game over. He's bending the knee slowly. Oh! That's it. Sam Cassidy uses his height advantage to take the first round here in our triathlon. World Wrestling Triathlon of Marking Power goes to contestant one, Sam Cassidy. Excellent work from the large gentleman in the backwards cap. The word try is Latin for three. Right? Luke Welling, like a Japanese prisoner of war from 1945, tied up against the side of a bamboo hut. John should probably not demonstrate on people made of styrofoam. We have the Ric Flair woo chopping competition. Competitors will take their big fat arms and whip it across the other competitors' big fat chests, like so. He kept his glasses on. That says something. Most dangerous game show, Ric Flair Chopping Edition. Woo! Justin one, are you ready? Oh my gosh, the shirts have come Justin, off. Sam Cassidy gives up first. Oh, the moves have gone flying in slow motion there. Panda Banks taking an invisible shower. Contestant two, slap. Let's do it, baby. Let's see what Panda Banks has got next. Oh yeah, got the spinny on the hands. Oh! Sam Cassidy didn't even blink. Didn't even blink, just Cassidy ate won. that. Andre Here we go, Cassidy on Banks. Shushing us. Gets a little stability. The slaps will continue until one of these men give up. On the right city of the panda. Oh, that really stung the big man there. <laughs> panda not even waiting for the referee to give him the go ahead. Here we go. Oh, it's Sam Cassidy Test smiling. Three. Test number one, freestyle chop. Are you ready? Ready. Let's take a look what Sam has in store. A little bit of funky town with the wave and a slap across the chest. He keeps it there. Look at Panda Banks just wincing. Did not just like holding that. Holding it there. Holding it. Freestyle chop. Are you ready? Chop. Panda Banks freestyle chop coming up. Oh! Just came out of nowhere with the spinning. 
the spinning backhand. Oh, Cassidy's gone down. He did not like that. Oh, I think it's the weight of all three slaps. And the banks turning the victory there. Whoa, how the tables have turned. Really looked like Panda Banks was gonna lose that one, but suddenly with that third and final slap, he takes the victory. The third event in this mighty triathlon of marketing and power, we have the almighty leg drop. Up off the top turnbuckle, up off the diving board. This is a splash dive competition, but sometimes you can land on Luke Welling, and sometimes you can't. Luke Welling? These two behemoths are in a dead heat. It's 1-1 one, one with one guy to play. Coming up first is Steve Panda Banks. Look at that height he's got there. Oh my word, Luke Welling. Where is Luke Welling? I don't think there's gonna be any survival. I think I landed all right on, you know. You know, Chris Benoit, I don't know about that one, but Chris Benoit's crazy enough, baby. He did it. So, Luke Welling bobbing in the sea like a lame duck. All right, next up we got Sam Cassidy. Let's see what he goes for. Here is the big man. Oh, he's going for the... Like oh, my word, he's going headfirst. It's a body slam. Oh, man. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. The diving headbutt on Luke Welling. Uh, Could have been better, but, you know... That's what happens when you're out here. Oh, I oh, think he may down. be dead. We should probably send in some lifeguards. Where are the lifeguards? As a referee, I hate not being able to make a decision. It's a draw. Oh, oh the draw. draw. <laughs> Nobody you likes the draw. Oh, the, the, the two gentlemen fight. John Henry. Yeah, he deserves it. The judge, the real loser in that competition, as was lame duck Luke Welling. The two big men go out with their heads held high. Well, we'll be right back with the most dangerous game show. <laughs> Three contestants, and we will make that three contestants into two contestants. We ask random people random questions. Top answer gets the points. Here we go! We asked 50 orphan children, what's the scariest animal? Yeah, this big, big, this big bull, you know? And he always hunted it, so I need like make food always. Because if, if he not eat, he will be start eating people, you know? It's very dangerous. Uh, I love cats. I love cats, like big, big cat guy. I love dogs too, but I'm, I'm a cat person. Uh, Hillary Clinton. We asked 20 sketchy white dudes, what's your favorite part of a woman's anatomy? Titties, of course. The jugga dukes. Yeah. The gooch. What's the gooch? Uh, that space between your balls and your ass. We asked 25 day drinkers if you could have sex with any historical figure, who would it be? Mm -hmm. Dwayne Rock Johnson. JFK. 
<laughs> Justin Trudeau in every color, all the colors, blackface included. Here at the Most Dangerous Game Show, we never sway in the way of the judges. We always keep it fair. And we hate Germans. So good luck, Chris Kirsch. You're about to fuck off. Fuck. Fucking cunt. Get go back to fucking fuck news. Fuck this shit anyway. Fuck you. Peace out, sauerkraut. Due to circumstances completely within our control, Johnny Tello is now fighting Street Fight Mike with their foot in the tire. Contestants on the most dangerous game show. One of the contestants comes from Russia, and one of the contestants comes from Canada. So you know they're going to be best of friends when they put their foot in a fucking tire and fight to the freaking death. This is going to be awesome. This is the most dangerous game show on the planet. Three rounds, 90 seconds per round. Let's see who takes whose head off. Foot in a tire action, Street Fight Mike versus Johnny Tello. Up next on the most dangerous game show. Filmed in front of a live studio audience. And we're back here at Rawat Boxing Stadium for the most dangerous game show. Hey, Luke, welcome back. I'm glad to be back. It's good to see John's got a shirt on. I'm a little banged up from the last event. I'm not going to lie. I heard Richard was calling me a lame duck. Fuck him. We're here for the main event. We're the only game show with a main event. This man needs no introduction to FMD fans. Standing in at about six feet, weighing in at about 80 kilos, he is a walking wall of pain and frickin' suffering. Give it up for the one, the only, Street Fight Mike! And his opponent standing across the squared circle hails from Canada, so you know he's the nicest person on the planet. He loves maple syrup, he loves chopping wood, he loves maple leaves. Please make some noise for your blue corner, Johnny Tello! I am stoked, foot in the tire. Oron's the third man in there in his skinny jeans. This is gonna be fan friggin' tastic. Oron is in charge. This one's gonna be intense. We got two high level fighters here. Round one, round one, Yotinu. Johnny Tello, he's got a lot of boxing experience. Even though he's the shorter man, let's see how he can adapt and overcome. Fun fact, uh, Street Fight Mike's corner man is a pit bull. Big, scary ass dog that never leaves his side. And I'm not lying, I'm not making that up. That's literally the only person he brought to this event. Yeah, so I guess on some level I'm rooting for Street Fight Mike because he needs the money to feed that dog and I've seen that dog when it's hungry and it's a fucking nightmare. Street Fight Mike, Phuket staple, you see him around a lot. Johnny Tello just flew in, super chill. Three 90 second rounds to see who has foot in the tire supremacy. If that foot comes out, we are gonna call you a pussy. Forces them to stay in the pocket here and just trade and bang. Street Fight Mike in the Southpaw stance. Johnny in the Orthodox stance. I'm not positive Street Fight Mike is a lefty. I think he may have just committed to the wrong foot in the tire and he's just going, he's just going with it. Yeah, they both get to choose which foot goes inside the tire. Oh, Oron putting a stop to the action. Taking a look at Street Fight Mike's glove there. Yeah, I'm telling you, this is what happens when you don't have a corner man and you just show up with your goddamn dog, then you're tying your gloves with your teeth. Let's go, Street Fight Mike. Come on. Act like you've been here before. All right, back into the action. Let's get started again. Oh, Johnny went in there trying to go for a real strong uppercut. Street Fight Mike responds in kind with a couple one twos. Another one two right there. Johnny deciding to wear the top like a fat kid in a swimming pool. Interesting, interesting. O'Ron with a big goofy smile on his face, enjoying the action, close up. If you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. And Johnny tell him to tell him to come forward, come forward. I don't know how much forward you can come in this. An overhand right there from Street Fight Mike. Good job. Come on. You're just in the pocket. Constant barrage. This is really intense. And that's the first round. Yeah. Oh, Ron jumping in there. Make sure these guys don't throw End any round blows one. after the bell. Johnny Tello loves a good scrap. Something like a hundred amateur fights. Take a look at the replay. Both guys exchanging right there. Johnny landing a few, a few straight rights there. Goes for that uppercut. Kind of missed. It's a great matchup if you're going to debut something as crazy as foot in the tire. 
All right. Oh, Johnny switching the legs, going for the right leg in the middle now. Sneaky. I know. Is that allowed? Both fighting in the southpaw stance. You just joining us. Street Fight Mike in the red, Johnny Tello in the shirt like a fat kid in the pool. And we've got some sick action going here. We're in the second of three rounds. There's no stoppage here. This is just all banging. All slanging and banging here. Johnny Tello letting that left hand fly since he changed stances. He told me before the fight that that's his power hand and now he's looking to put that hip into it. Ooh, nice short right uppercuts there. Ooh, another, another uppercut to the body. Yeah, he's starching that body. He's, Johnny Tello's a creative boxer. He's kind of built for this foot in the tire. Street fight Mike really trying to pepper him in there, but he's just trying to survive at this point. Johnny has been able to, to land pretty well. Oh, almost looked like he fell there. He was about to fall. Oh, Johnny just giving a barrage and punches. Nice, nice movement there to, to evade those strikes from Mike. Oh, but he did land a nice little left there from Mike. Mike looking a little worse for the wear from those body shots. Slowing down a little bit, which is funny to say because they're not moving at all. We're hearing heavy leather here at Rawai Boxing Stadium. All these punches are just reverberating out. They're echoing. Boom, boom, oh. Oof. And that's the end of round two. And Orod is crumpled and crashed into the corner and holding his junk. Let's take a look at the replay here. Both fighters in a southpaw stance with their right feet inside the tire. Johnny really frustrating Mike with that movement. You know, Mike's got a stellar jab, but Johnny is super creative. Yeah, and he's able to deliver these hard, hard punches. Come forward just enough. They're short, but they're strong. Third and final round coming into it. Rawai Boxing Stadium makes some noise. Third and final round, close fight. Oh. Oh, John oh. forward there with a nice step through. Yeah, Mikhail the aggressor now trying to use his length to catch up to Johnny Tello, trying to get down on his height level. Interesting. Biting down on that mouth guard or just throwing here. Johnny Tello looks like he's having a little more fun than Mike. Oh, Ron clearly having the best time. Oh, a couple punches there from Johnny landed real flush. These flurries are fast and furious. Oh, nice left uppercut there from Johnny. Oh, hitting the body, really investing in it. They're using all of that tire. Oh, uh Oron -oh, switching uh -oh. the legs. Uh oh, switching Johnny legs. Tello, sneaky, sneaky, switching the legs again. That's high level foot in the tire, switching stances in the break there. It's a nice little strategy change. Let's see what happens here. Oh, Johnny oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. able to land a couple yeah, uppercuts. Street fight, Mike. Some serious action really in this round. We might get a knockdown. Mike looking pretty rough. Johnny oh. Tello kind of opening it up here. 10 seconds. It looked like Street Fight Mike was using the clinch to stay up right there. Ooh, nice. Sneaky pop there from Johnny That's Tello. Again, who switched stances halfway through this round. End of round three, and that's the end of the fight. And Oron goes flying out as we end our third round. Let's take a look at the replay here. Both guys just throwing with bad intentions every single punch. And around and round this tire we Good go. gracious. Ladies and gentlemen, did you enjoy foot in the tire boxing? We don't have any judges here for foot in the tire boxing because oh, you guys are Oh, we're throwing it to the crowd judges. for a decision? So I love ladies it. and gentlemen, love it. please make some noise if you feel like the red corner. Street Fight Mike won. Make some noise for Street Fight Mike. Here at the Most Dangerous Game Show, you get to choose the winner. Street Fight Mike with a Please. decent round of applause because from what I'm told around here, he's a bit of a pariah. Did Johnny Tello win? Oh, and this crowd really, really making their choice known with Johnny Ladies Tello. Ladies and gentlemen, from your decision, your winner for Foot in the Tire here at the Most Dangerous Game Show is Johnny Tello! Johnny Tello hopped off the plane, basically has a few drinks, trains one day, kicks some ass. He's welcome back on the game show. 
any day of the week. Great event. Great, great event. I think that one's a keeper. I think Foot in a Tire is a keeper. These two guys are basically the first monkeys shot into space. This was great. This is a great debut event. And this has been the most dangerous game show. I'm JP Mistanza. And I'm Luke Welling. And it's been our pleasure to bring you six wacky fights on our pilot episode of the most dangerous game show. More madness coming your way in the future. Thanks to everyone for tuning in. Thanks to everyone for participating. Thanks for whoever gave us the tire, uh, the coin flippers. Female contestant, male contestant. Yes, thank you to John Henry, John Henry, John Henry, and the other guy who looks suspiciously like John Henry. Shout out to all Siamese twins. Shout out to Malcolm X and the dude he absolutely blasted. Yeah, I hope you're okay, Steve. 